What's up gamers, it's Gucci here bringing you guys a how to level a Spellslinger BD Necromancer video. I like to start with saying that, that at the end of the day, you should always do what's what you're most comfortable with, whether it being swapping the Spellslinger at 24, 31, 41, or 48. Just do what feels good to you and it'll turn out great. In this video, I'll be swapping to Spellslinger at around 41, uh, basically x6 when you do Twilight Strand. So I'm going to split this video into sections. They will be level 1 to 4, level 4 to 28, level 28 to 41, and level 41 onwards to BA. I'll stop at Blood Aqueduct as you start heading into the endgame setup at this point. I like to state that this video will not be a what do I do in story guide, but rather a what skills and passive tree decisions do I make video. For level 1 to 4, you want to be muling Onslaught from Scion and then taking Freezing Pulse from Witch and buying Stormblast Mine at some point. You can purchase Stormblast Mine on either the Scion or the Witch. You want to check your vendors for green blue linked items to be able to link Freezing Pulse to Onslaught at the minimum. The ideal links would be green blue blue for Freezing Pulse, Onslaught and Arcane Surge at this point. You want at least 2 green blue linked items by level 4. You can either use Freezing Pulse or Stormblast Mine to clear or do bosses. They are both pretty similar in both aspects. For the first 3 points, you would want to just allocate them into the Witch starting spell damage. After you do Hail Lake, you want to purchase Swift Assembly and Frost Bomb while taking Orb of Storms and Frost Blink from Tarkley. The entire time, you are looking out for blue blue green links and blue blue blue. Ideally on wands, as if you get those, you'll probably never replace them till way later. They are not uncommon to get, and I actually got both of those links pretty early in this run. Once you hit level 4, you need to swap some gems into your setup. I would recommend finding a safe spot in Submerge to be able to stand still and do it if it's your first time doing this swap. You want to socket Frostbring into the blue blue starting one that you get as Witch with Arcane Search. You then want to replace Freezing Pulse with Frost Bomb, Socket Orb of Storm somewhere and link your Stormblast Mine with Swift Assembly with the second blue-green linked item you have. Here is what you have options on how you can clear. You could use Frost Bomb to one-shot pack and then use Orb of Storm with Stormblast when Frost Bomb is on cooldown, or you could just not bother with Frost Bomb entirely and purely rely on Orb of Storm with Stormblast Mine. They work. They both work fine, with Frostborn being slightly more efficient. The way me and many other races route to Dweller skill point in Act 1 is that we leave a portal in Submerge near the bridge and we go back to town after reaching lower prison waypoint. We kill the Dweller and when we go back to town to receive our skill point, we take Adder Lightning as a reward. You can link Adder Lightning to either Frostborn or Stormblast Mine, I don't really think it matters much. Here is where we do our first wand craft, a wand of magic rarity, an alteration, and a resistance ring of normal rarity. I opt for a sapphire ring to roll some flat cold damage spells on my wand for its synergy with the exposure debuff provided by Frostbomb. Going lightning craft is also fine, as you do pick up lightning walker which provides lightning specific damage. Do note that the resulting wand retains gem rings and will require level 8. People generally level are level 8 at this point. Continue along on your way to Brutus and you should have lit hit level 9 sometime before Brutus. This allows you to get the powerful Lightning Walker notable. You also get a gem level up on Frostworm and OOS somewhere through level 9 which is really nice. After Brutus, you take Flame Dash as a quest reward to replace Frostblink from Tarclay and purchase Smoke Mine and a Jade Amulet if you have the Transmute. It's not really a big deal if you can't get smoke mine at this point. You can always just get it after Mervail. The next point where you actually have to change something about your gear will be level 16 where you take Herald of Thunder as a quest reward and purchase Summon Skitter Bots for an alteration. This provides you some nice damage boost through the shock aura from the Skitter Bots as well as some passive damage from Herald of Thunder's effect. This is also where I drop Frost Bomb completely and swap Onslaught and, and Add Lightning uh, to your Orb of Storm links. At level 18, after killing Weaver, you will take the Elemental Focus Support Gem from Silk and ideally link it to Stormblast Mine. From level 9 to 18, 
you should have started parting to Elemental Overload followed by Darkouts for some nice damage, car speed, cooldown recovery, and movement speed boosts. Cooldown recovery makes your Flame Dash and Smoke Mine charges recharge more quickly. It is important to avoid using control disruptions on Orb of Storms as it negatively affects your Elemental Overload uptime as well. At Val is where I portal to town after clicking the Apex to do my Wand Crafts. You want a Wand of Magic Rarity, an Alteration, and a Topaz Ring of Rare Rarity. You acquire a Rare Topaz by either doing Essences or essencing and Essencing a Ring, using an Orb of Alchemy, or getting lucky and straight up dropping it as Rare. Ideally you want to do it on both wands, but I got unlucky with Alterations and only managed to do it on one wand in this run. Nothing much really changes here from now till level 28. At level 28, you pick up what I call the pack special. Make sure to check out pack at twitch.tv slash pack underscore hc. After killing Gravisius, you want to pick up cremation as a quest reward. Then head back to Act 2 to purchase Elemental Focus, Control Destruction, and Concentrated Effect to link with cremation. And also you purchase Desecrate to spawn corpses for your cremation. Your passive tree should also progress into the Templar area, picking up Discipline Training, Holy Dominion, Light of Divinity, Precision, and Amplify. Here is where you start witnessing the strength of cremation, where you just destroy Dominus and his adds. Cremation has some advantages over Lightning Spire, where it does not matter if the boss moves around. You have unlimited cast of Desecrates and Cremations. Furthermore, it has added synergy with our normal lab ascendancy node, which gives us bonuses for having corpses near our enemies, as well as some area of effect for consuming corpses. Pack has been using cremation for the longest time and stuck to it despite being mocked by other races and casters about it, especially Rice QT. And it turns out he was right about cremation after all. It does seem to be at the minimum as effective, but most likely more effective than Rice Inspire. Sometimes, after Dominus, you want to head into lab and deal with Azaro to get your ascendancy sorted out. I normally do it upon reaching Crystal Vein's waypoint, roughly around 31-32. With your next points, start allocating some life nodes to beef, beef yourself up for normal lab. Having to log out or dying in lab requires you to rerun the entire thing and you really want to avoid it. After killing Azaro, you ascend as Necromancer and pick up Plaguebringer. Gameplay is nothing special. You're just casting Orb of Storms with the occasional Mind Throw and running around with Smoke Mind Flame Dash, dropping down that Desecrate and cremating the bosses. Game becomes really easy at this point, you have fantastic clear, fantastic single target, life is great. I'm going to skip the remainder of the boss deletion content in hopes that GG doesn't notice how busted this is and move along to Act 6 where we approach the Spell Singer Swap. We do Twilight Strand to enable us to buy Frenzy plus Barrage support. We then go back to Act 3 to buy 3 Spell J Slinger Gems, which cost an alteration each. We get our Volatile Dead from Act 1 as well as 2 Spell Cascades. You then link Spell Slinger to Spell Cascade and Desecrate, your second Spell Slinger to Volatile Dead, Spell Cascade, and Elemental Focus or Combustion, and lastly, your third Spell Slinger to Wave of Conviction, which we will have to purchase for an alteration from Act 2. You will still use Cremation for bosses, but your primary source of clear is just now attacking with Frenzy. With your passive tree, you would start getting divine judgments for some nice damage, moving up to purity of flesh from more life. You also want to spec out of dark arts and get a shield for some added defenses, and then using the points saved from dark arts to take explosive impact. Nothing much really changes in your setup from now till BA, although I would recommend to start leveling a detonate gem as you will take out cremation for it in Blood Aqueduct. Your passive tree now to BA, which you should be around 56 when you enter, would go something like this. You will get spiritual aid. Maybe you bought a quick recovery if you feel like you need more life, then you start parting to the Scion Life Wheel for some massive life boosts. Upon reaching BA, you want to swap our Elemental Focus on Voltal there for Inspiration and completely remove Wave of Conviction and Cremation in favor of a Detonate Dead, Spell Slinger, Spell Cascade, and Inspiration setup. These gem choices gives you the most amount of unreserved mana. However, other options such as Combustion on Voltal Dead and Hypothermia on Detonate Dead also work. Play around with it and see how much unreserved mana you feel comfortable playing with. It is important to note that if you do use Inspiration, 
inspiration is required to be also linked to your Frenzy Barrage setup. It is also at this point that you would like to try to squeeze in Shield Charge. Shield Charge makes this build field amazing. It comes at a cost of a Castle Damage Taken setup early on, but once you get a 5 link or a 6 link chest, you should be able to manage it all in. The last thing I would like to add is that this respec thing you might want to consider doing if you're intending to do the same tree as I showed in my overview of the race build. You need to spec up through a lot of the dead, link your tree from the intelligence path here, connect it all the way to purity of flesh, and then you remove all these parting that uh parting nodes that you took initially. And now you're in now you're right beside the block nodes and get better bang for your buck for each point invested. Your next point we're going to pool prep for some life and the spell block nodes for some defensive boost. That's going to be all for the video. I hope it's at least helped one person in making their leveling experience clearer. If you are that one person, do let me know down in the comments. It keeps me motivated to make this stuff knowing that I'm at least helping someone else make their life slightly easier. Thank you so much for the, watching the video. If you like what you see and want to see more, do remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video. I also stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash almost daily. The new league is coming out in just over a week and we plan to compete in the solo cell found hardcore race to 100. Hope to see you guys in chat and have a great day.